Hello, my name is Steve Miller. I'm a math professor at Williams College, and this is the uh, continuation of the probability lectures. We're going to continue with looking at card games. We're going to look at bridge, and today we're going to talk about long suits and distributions like that. And as always, it's a pleasure to thank the Journal of Number Theory and the Teachers of Scholars program. All of the other lectures are available online off of my homepage. And then just as a quick review, uh, the function nc, which we've been using a lot, is the combinatorial function. It's the number of ways of choosing our objects from n when order does not matter. So we use the letter c to denote combinations. So we often write in ncr like this with parentheses and then the n above the r without a dividing line. And that just means n choose r. And we showed in a previous lecture that it's equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So there's a really nice way to compute it if you know how to do factorials. So for example, if we had five people and we wanted to choose two of them, there are 10 ways to do that. And we can see this by if we have five people with a very boring names, A, B, C, E, G, E, there are five ways to choose the first person and then 10 ways to choose the second. And it gives us 20 pairs. But when we do this, the pairs have been ordered. So we're talking about first person, second person. We have to remove the ordering. And we remove the ordering by dividing by two factorial, which is the number of ways to order two objects. So another thing I wanted to just review is how many distinct deals are there in bridge? So recall in the hand of bridge, each of the four players gets 13 cards. It doesn't matter what order you get the cards, it only matters which ones you get. And we calculated the number of possible deals. So the first person, you have to choose 13 of the 52 cards for them. That's 52 choose 13. Then the next person, how many cards are left? 39. 39, they get 13. So it's, you choose 13 from the 39, 39 see 13. For the third person, there's 26 cards left to choose 13, 26, choose 13. And then the last person's pretty easy. There's only 13 cards left, they need 13, boom, there you go. And so in terms of what it equals, it's about 10 to the 28, 10 to the 29. And we did a nice calculation, and we imagined the ridiculous situation of everybody who has ever lived was born at the start of the universe, and each of them dealt a hand of bridge every second since time began that would not be quite large enough. It would be close, but it wouldn't quite be there yet. But that, yes. there would also be repeats of hands. Well, this is what's telling us about how long we need to go before we see a repeat. That this process is not enough yet to guarantee a repeat. Okay. We need to go a little bit longer. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to talk it's about- not guaranteed, isn't it? I bet it would happen though. Well, there's a reasonable chance it would happen. Um, and in fact, this is like the birthday problem as to um, how many people do you need? And I would say that it is very likely that you would have a repeat with that many hands, yes. So I, I agree that with this many hands dealt, yeah. you should see a repeat, but we have not seen all the hands. On tech, I will turn it, you might we, Right, but it is quite likely that you would have seen one. In fact, it's a more advanced topic that you need on the order of square root, so you definitely would have um, almost surely seen it, but not guaranteed. What I want to do now is I want to calculate what is the probability that you're dealt at least seven cards in the suit. And I want you to think a little bit about how would you handle trying to find the probability that you have at least seven cards in the suit. How would you attack this problem? So I'm going to pause and let you think about it. Okay, welcome back. So one of the things that we like to do in math is we break a hard problem into a lot of easier problems. And it's not a coincidence that I'm asking about seven cards because you can't have two seven card suits in the hand. But if I asked about a six card suit, could you have two six card yes. suits? Yes. So what we can do is we can figure out what's the probability that you have exactly one seven card suit plus the probability you have exactly one eight card suit all the way up to the probability you have exactly one 13 card suit. I think the 13 is very rare. The 13 is extremely rare. Right? How many hands are there that have exactly all cards in the suit? Four. four. There's only four. So what four the, out of whatever the other. Well, we'll do that in a second. So what are these probabilities? What is the probability, for instance, that you have exactly one seven card suit? So I'm gonna pause and let you think about this for a moment. All right, welcome back. All right, and so let's figure out what it is. So if we wanna have exactly one seven card suit, there are four ways to choose the suit, spade, heart, diamond, club, four choose one. Now of the 13 cards in that suit, 
how many cards do we have to choose? Seven. 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 And now, this is the hard part. We need to choose another six cards to fill our hand, but we can't choose any card in that suit. Because otherwise we would have otherwise we would have ten. Otherwise we could have eight or nine or ten. So how many cards are not in this suit? 39. 39. 52 minus 13. So there are 39 cards left that aren't in the suit. We choose six of them. And that's how many ways to have exactly seven. If we wanted exactly eight, what would we change in this line? Um, we would choose that eight to the eight, eight and we would and choose four. I mean, not no. four, five. And choose five. five. Right. So it's not so bad. It becomes eight and five, and then we keep going until all the way here is 13 choose 13 times 39 choose zero. Because if we've got all 13 cards, there's nothing else to happen. Can it be 52 choose zero? No. Well, they, they're the same number. Yeah. But it's better it to would, choose 39 choose zero. Because then it's right. like the recipe. Now, we've seen this compact notation before, the summation notation. It means take what you have in here and first put in the value k equals 7, then put in the value k equals 8 and add, then put in the value k equals 9 and add, and go all the way up to k equals 13 and add. And so we come up with uh, thousands, millions, billions. So there's 25 billion, 604,567, I'm sorry, 25 billion, 604,000, yeah, That sounds better. Yes. Is that now, wrong if that looks like small? Well, um, it's, it's it compared, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> compared to bank accounts, that's a lot of money. And I'd love to have that much money in my bank account. But compared but to how compared the, to the but compared, number we saw earlier, yes. how many hands there are. Well, exactly. And that's the yeah. number we have right here. 52 choose 13. The number of hands is, let's see, thousands, millions, billions. 635 billion, 13 million. 559,600. That's a nice number. Well, but if you look at the ratio of them, the it's ratio exactly. is only 0 0.04, or you could say it's as large as 0.04. It's 4%. Is 4% a significant probability? No. When you're playing a bunch of bridge hands, okay. do you expect to see this happening? Yeah. yeah. Should your conventions have ways to bid seven card suits? Yes. Yeah, 4% yeah, of the time, you should have a seven card suit. You can calculate what's the probability two people have a seven card suit, but if you have four people playing at a table. And you can, but you know that their seven card suits cannot be the same. They can't be the same, exactly. So here we can do the probability that we have a seven, at least a seven card suit is 4%. The probability we have at least an eight card suit is very similar. It's 0.5%. So what that means is almost all hands with at least seven cards in a suit have exactly seven cards in the suit. So about 87.5% of the time, if you have at least seven cards, it's gonna be exactly seven cards in the suit. Which makes sense. Each additional card is gonna get harder and harder to get. Yeah. So what is the probability you have exactly six in the suit? What is the complication? So I'm gonna pause and let you think about how you would attack this problem. Okay, okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to deal first with the complication. So the complication is that we could have two six card suits. We have to figure out how to handle it. So the problem is we could have two six card suits. And so it's not just choosing 13 choose six. We've got to be careful for the remaining 39 cards. We don't choose six of them from the same suit. And so we're going to use a great result we talked about in the last lecture, the law of double counting. So we have two events A and B. And we, know what is, we want to know what is the probability that A or B or both happen. So this is the inclusive or. It's the probability that A happens plus the probability B happens minus the probability they both happen because we double count that. And that's why we use your reddish, bluish, and purplish. This is showing the double counting. So this big pink oval is A you happening. You said that was red. Uh, red, pink. My color's not so good. This blue one over here that is the probability yellow, though, of B then happening. That could be yellow, though, because then you could have orange. And then here is the double count. So how does this happen for our problem? So let's think about how many ways are there for a player to have exactly six cards in a specific suit. I'll pause the video so you can think about it. All right, so there are four choose one ways to choose the specific suit we care about. Then we have to choose six cards from that suit. Order doesn't matter, so we can choose six. And then finally, we have seven cards that we have to take from the remaining 39. The problem with this is that you could be in the unlikely situation where you have two six-card suits, or even worse, a six-card suit and a seven-card suit. And that is possible in the 39 choose seven. So how do we fix this? 
So I will let you think about this for a moment. I right, welcome back. So how do we fix this? Well, we do with the double counting. How many ways are there to have two suits with exactly six cards each? How many ways are there to have one suit with seven and one suit with six? All right, so we talked about how to do this. And so we're going to first do the case when we have two suits with exactly six cards. So we have, there's a couple of different ways of doing the calculation. One is to choose, I have to choose two out of the suits. And so that's four choose two. And then I have 13 choose six ways of choosing the six cards from the first suit. And then 13 choose six from the second suit. And then 26 choose one. And then for the second one, um, it does matter which suit is the seven card suit and which is the six card suit. So I first choose the seven card suit, four choose one. And then there's 13 choose seven ways to choose seven cards in that suit. And then the next suit is three choose one, three ways to choose that suit, and it's 13 choose six. So we have to be very careful when we do this. It's not four choose one times three choose one here, because both suits have six cards. We're choosing two of the four suits. So this is actually a very subtle point. Now, how likely do you think these last two ones are relative to the first? Do you think they're of similar size or do you think they're much smaller? Do you think it's very rare for somebody to have two six card suits? Yeah. yeah. And so if we do the calculations, there's 105 billion and it'll change ways to have a six card suit in a specific suit. There's only 459 million to have two six card suits. And then only 11 billion to have a six card and a seven card suit. So, well, 459 million, so it's a big number relative to money in our bank account. It's small relative to 105 billion. And so if we look at that, um, the probability that you have exactly one six card suit is we look at all the six card suits and we subtract, you know, two six card suits and a six card and a seven card suit, we get about 16.6%. The 16.6% of reasonable probability. Yeah. It's about one in six. And so... Basically, every six hands, you expect to have, an, have exactly six cards in a suit. That's kind of cool, because six and six. Yeah. And so, oops. and so what this tells us is that we need to have a bidding convention that deals with having six card suits, because that's going to happen pretty frequently. And so um, if we look at the other ones, to have two six card suits happens about 0.07% of the time. To have a seven card suit and a six card suit yeah, happens 0.00%. 185% of the time. So to put things in perspective, mm -hmm. if you were to play 100 games, 100 hands of bridge, then you have exactly a six card suit about 17 times on average. So that's pretty reasonable. If you were to play 1,000 games having exactly, oops, having exactly two six card suits happens 0.72 times on average, which means if you play 1,000 games, the probability is that you haven't had two six cut suits yet. That's how real it is. For the last one, if you were to play 10,000 games, you sure you'd expect the third to happen about 0.19 times on average. So you don't expect to see, you would have to play about 50,000 games to see it happen once. So that seems like a fun way to waste a card. It would definitely, well, we do have a lot of time now with stuck home. But the point of this is to give you some idea of what kind of bidding conventions do we need. Do we have to really worry about what happens if we're dealt a six card and a seven card suit? No. No. We expect this to happen once every 50,000 deals. Okay? All right. Even if you play um, a huge number of games of bridge a year, if you play 10 games of bridge I mean, it's a so day. Likely you, could, you could still get it. You could still lucky. get it. But there's 365 days in a year, okay? <laughs> call, it, call it 500 days in a year, round up. And say so you play 10 hands of bridge a day. So it'd be 5,000 hands a year. In 10 years, you would expect this to happen to you once. So <laughs> do you want a bidding convention to deal with something that you expect to happen once uh, every 10 years? Well, I mean, I would probably just bid my seven point two. Well, the point is, you only have so many bids in bridge. So if you have a bid that can handle this case, 
it means you've used that bit up and you can't use it for something else. So when we're deciding what the different bridge conventions should be, we try to focus on things that will happen a lot. Yeah, but kill it. What if you have the two, three, four, five, six, All seven, right. eight of a suit? It's still it's still a good length suit. Then you're probably not going to do it. Okay. So the last thing is to just quickly recap. What did we learn today? And that's this, a very nice hand. Up. That, yes, this is, a very nice, this is a very nice hand. I would just fit so no trouble. Yes. So Unless you're trying to get the wow. There's often more than all right. There's often more than one way to compute an answer. Okay. You can break a complicated probability into a sum of simpler probabilities. It's important that the cases are disjoint and they cover all possibilities. So if we missed cases, it would be bad. But if we make sure we cover all the cases, it's a one. So again, we want to break it up into distinct cases, but we have to make sure we cover all the possibilities. So when we were trying to figure out the probability of having exactly seven cards in a hand, that wasn't so bad. But when we were trying to do having a six card suit, we had to remember it's possible to have two six card suits or a six card and a seven card suit. There's a tremendous power in using NCR to compute the number of combinations. We know how to do this. It's just N factorial over R factorial and minus R factorial. So if we can tell the right story, frequently there are smaller effects, there are lower order terms, and technically, you need to include them if you want to get the right answer, but if you drop them, it's not so bad. You see how rare it is to have a six card suit and a seven card suit. If we forget to include this, and we're trying to figure out the probability that we have exactly one six card suit, it doesn't really affect the probability to a noticeable amount. Why you need 13 points? Like, why 13 well, that, well, that's a, We can talk about why you need 13 points for bidding later. Um, if you can compute something, if you can compute something two different ways, it's a great way to do that. So if you can compute something two different ways, it's worth doing that because it's a great way to check your work. And then the last thing is, if you can write a computer program, that is a wonderful skill. And it's a great way to check and see are these answers reasonable. So we hope you enjoyed today's lecture. Be sensible. Have a great day. Take care.